Okay. Um, our first talk tonight is, I think, probably our local representative for OLPC. Oh. <laughs> well, he's definitely the, the person who runs the OLPC Friends Group. Um, he's going to basically give us a State of the Union address. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. State of the Union. Cool. Excellent. Okay. This works, obviously. It's on. <laughs> okay. Here's Mitchell Seaton. Cheers. Thank you. Oh, well, it's, uh, it's been a while since I've been back at SLUG and it's good to be here. Thanks uh, very much to SLUG committee and community for inviting me to come speak today about OLPC. So I, don't, I think um, there hasn't been a talk here about OLPC for quite some time. And, uh, basically, I'd like to gauge like, who is familiar with OLPC, the laptop project. Hands? Yeah. So kind of half-half. So, so some of you haven't, might not even seen the laptop before. Um, may have even heard about it and how it's been used around the world. So base, I'll give you a, a brief rundown um, of the laptop. Essentially, like a small netbook. It's, uh, well, it looks a bit like a toy, doesn't it? It's like green. It's uh, got floppy ears. It can turn its head. It can become a bit of like a reader. It, uh, essentially, it's been designed um, for the child in mind, obviously. And um, obviously run on the Sugar platform, as you can see here. Who's here f heard of Sugar? Familiar with Sugar? Love you. Obviously, um, very Fedora-based system. So some of you are familiar with that. And, well, just a few features I'll just take you through. Um, as you can see, it's got three USB ports, camera and microphone, um, LCD screen. Uh, it's quite, quite an innovative piece of hardware. A lot of power management features went to this. And I guess you could say that um, it possibly started like the netbook craze. It uh, definitely rose a lot of competition in the marketplace from competitors like Intel and other companies like that. And even I heard Microsoft wanted to get their operating system onto this uh, little device here. So um, the old PC Battleground, it's a bit of an ominous title, Battleground. But I guess that's what it's been over the last few years. There's been uh, ups and downs. Probably it hasn't been a successful project as, um, I guess, like the intended goals would be, say, to sell many thousands of these laptops to developing nations. But it has been successful in a number of ways. And there has been successful projects in many different countries around the world, in Nepal, through Africa, South America, you know, Asia, a whole lot of places. So just give you an overview. So what's this project technically surrounds itself around the idea of technology with education? And I was at, I was at a, um, a talk during this week at uh, University of New South Wales where um, Mike Bogle, was talking on open education on the, on the topic. And there's just some quotes from his talk that um, he had in slides that kind of stood out to me and uh, I thought quite related to what this, the laptop project is about. Um, here by the Hewlett Foundation, it says, open education is a simple and powerful idea that the world's knowledge is a public good, that technology in general and the World Wide Web in particular provide an extraordinary opportunity for everyone to share use and reuse knowledge. Notice that means everyone. So we're not discounting like um, people in a lot of nations that may not have access to technology. So this, the idea of this project is to bring, I guess, a piece of technology that's relatively cheap and affordable to, to or obviously to the child, to assist and to support their education needs and to obviously give them access to technology that doesn't, that bridges that gap. Or, Obviously, in the um, developed world, um, we're um, quite privileged to have a lot of technology around us. And even from a young age, with kids growing up in Australia, we have a lot of uh, electronic devices and kind of consumed by a whole lot of things. But when you put one of these laptops in the hands of a child in one of these other countries, say in an African country nation, particularly in out, like, outback regions, um, maybe not so much in the cities, then you can see on the child's face like just the overwhelming enthusiasm and like it's totally new, something new to them. 
So it's designed to be picked up easy and um, by the child, ages ranging from five to like 12 years old. Another quote that stood out was, education is a mindset, it's a way of working. You don't produce openness, you are open. I know this is the Sydney Linux users group and obviously a lot of us are users of uh, Linux, op op Linux distros, operating systems, and surround ourselves with the whole idea of openness. And um, open education is, <coughs> I guess it's coming, it's in its early, early stages, it's a new idea, but talking about, um, kind of relates like the, the sharing of knowledge and the sharing of content for, to assist in education, be it by um, lessons that teachers design, um, no matter what platform it is on, but open it up. And as that quote says there, it's, it's like a culture, it's like a way of being. So you don't just produce it, you are open. And I'd say that a lot of us here um, kind of relate to that openness, especially being Linux users. Let's move on. There's a lot to talk about. I mean, what I wanted to do today is just give you an update on where, we, where the project is. As um, mentioned before, um, I'm currently or assisting with uh, the LPC Friends group in running a, a localized Sydney's user group kind of like this where we get together and meet and just to help people have access and developers have access to the pro project and, and to contribute and be a part of that and help foster that environment. So where we are, like the project as a worldwide basis, um, there's a lot of development work has occurred to build the software platform and on this machine, this is the X01, the original version. Um, and it's up to build 802, which is kind of the latest stable release. And so it's accessible for, um, well actually for you to use. And um, a new idea was coined um, recently of that you could actually use a USB to use as a live USB, or live USB. You can actually run the Sugar environment on any kind of computer, on a laptop, on a desktop machine. So that's known as Sugar on a Stick. And that's been developed by the Sugar Labs community. And the uh, latest stable release this year was called Strawberry, and there's also other snapshots that have been coming out regularly by the developers that keep repackaging them consistently. And there's a lot of development work going to the Sugar platform, so it's kind of been separated or branched off from the LPC original project, and that's kind of what originally started out being built up to, to be built for this laptop, but now it's branched out in other ways. But and obviously continue to be developed. So it's up to version 8.0.86, sorry. And obviously it features a number of activities, like lesson uh, activities for kids, and that range from a whole, not just your browser or a reader, but from actual kind of games or um, activities that can be used in the classroom, like a physics example, I'll show you just a bit of a demo soon. And there's been other releases because there's a bit of a move for um, obviously with you know, further upstream development of Fedora to kind of get that to work better with the old PC laptop. Um, actually to, um, obviously there's a lot of customization done and for this particular laptop. So there's a move towards just being able to work together with like the Fedora distribution, uh, Fedora 11, there's been some images developed that are based on that distribution. Let's move forward, so sugar on a stick. Uh, as you can see here on this laptop, it's running off a live USB. And um, this is actually a later, one of the latest snapshots. And um, uh, easy, there's like easy to, to, to make, just uh, um, you just follow the instructions online and there's uh, ISO images available for you to make and you can test it out and you can use the Sugar environment. You don't have to have one of these laptops in your hand which can, by some means, be hard to come by, obviously. So this is a way to give every person access to the Sugar environment to help with the development and um, with the use of it. Just a bit of, um, so this is where we're at with uh, Sugar.86 is in current development still. I think it will be final release next month. And uh, let's move a few key features, I'll just point out, of the release and move into the MetaCity Windows Manager. And um, obviously you, you'll be able to use GNOME on the, in the environment. So you'll be able to switch between GNOME and Sugar. And uh, Ganache for Flash 
plain flash movies and uh, there's been a toolbar redesign. Uh, you can now do multiple tabs in the browse activity and it restores rainbow um, support, which is uh, some of the security uh, features of the laptop or oh, and sugar. And also the ad, ad hoc networking. So I'll give um, just a bit of a demonstration of one, what one of the sugar activities might look like if you've never seen an activity before. Can we switch? Yeah, thanks. So here, um, this physics activity, I, I know um, on the slide there I had a link to a blog and uh, a teacher in Australia, I think South Australia, has been using it with his classroom and taking through uh, the kids. Uh, probably not this one, the other. Yep, yeah, yeah. Let's uh, just run a bit faster. <laughs> okay, so this is um, the sugar environment on sh running off uh, live USB. And uh, we'll just go straight to the activity. I think I'll just open it up. So you can see there was an activity ring, you have multiple different activities. And uh, it's just an idea of what um, you could use like in the education in the classroom. This is, the idea of this is to teach kind of physics principles. So inertia, gravity, things like this. So I could just create an object and drop it, and it drops. And so you can control if it's playing or stop. Just a whole lot of little fun things you can do with this. Um, as you saw in the photo before, you can create little stick figures and throw them around at each other. You can have little motors. So I might create a square, put a motor, motor in it, and maybe use a connector. Or let's create a or weird, weird object of some sort. Connector. Uh, we'll connect it. Uh, wrong one. Two motors connected together, I think. Maybe it doesn't work in. Oh, that's a motors. Let me see. Ah, it doesn't like it. Something wrong with this one. <laughs> uh, it's not liking it. Uh, as you can see, you can get the idea. You just throw things around. I'll just switch back because I think I've got a lot more to cover. Um, okay, yeah. So that's just a little example of a sugar activity. It's kind of a fun one. Like, as you can see, it could be used in a classroom like this. The teacher explaining some physics principles, but it can also be used as like a game for kids to enjoy. Yeah. And um, so it kind of, as kind of fits both those purposes. What is a head? Well, um, I guess it's a bit of a technical crowd. I guess uh, who's interested in hearing about the the next generation of the laptop? What what's new? A few people, lots of people. That's good. Well, um, the next version, obviously, 1.5 is an upgrade, and I wanted to give you just a few details if you if you hadn't already read about it. Um, there's a, also point out there's a contributors program, so you can apply online for for laptops to be sent to you, um, ones that have been uh, recently developed and should become available in during September or later this year. And obviously you have lots of improvements, lots of speed improvements. A lot of complaints were obviously this laptop had only about 256 megabytes of RAM, very low amount, obviously slowed down a lot with a lot of activities open. New machine will have like a gigabyte and I'll take you through some of those details. What's the difference? Um, so it's based off, um, I don't know if you're familiar with open firmware, and uh, that's just uh, the build it's using for this device. Uh, the CPU is using a new processor from VIA, and uh, with ultra low voltage, I think it is, and uh, the C7M model, uh, with a clock speed of 400 megahertz to one gigahertz. So a lot faster machine, a lot more powerful processor. Um, and I think, uh, as I'll show you later, a lot smaller dev device too. Um, the companion chip, uh, VX855, there's links down there you can see to the product pages. Um, features 3D capabilities. Now that's kind of interesting for development um, and uh, for um, power consumption as well. But um, because a lot of the focus will go into 
also maintaining power consumption at a low rate so for the battery to last a quite long time. So 4 gig gigabytes and NAND flash, possibly uh, up to 8 gigabytes and 2 bit per cell. And um, as I said, 1 gigabyte DRAM. Wireless is from um, Marvel manufacturer again, 802.11bg, um, possibly yes, unsure about that. Um, same features, basically the laptop's going to look the same. It's going to um, essentially have the same screen, kind of the same keyboard layout, um, same kind of ports, SD card underneath here. Maybe they might put that in a better position, I don't know. Um, same stereo and all, all that. I think uh, capabilities for HD audio will be in this new device as well. Here's a bit of a schematic of uh, the motherboard. Um, I think parts is, will change in the later developments. Um, a lot of the people from OLPC are working closely with the manufacturers over in Taiwan. So obviously this chip via is competitor to Intel's the Atom, yeah. And uh, I think the very OLPC is one of the or early adopters of this chip, I'm pretty sure. And uh, the, the VIA company, I think they're hoping that it's going to get take, taken up by a lot of other um, uh, manufacturers as well. So just as you can see, I don't know if you want to take you through the details. It's the RAM up here. Come on. Um, it's quite clear. It's quite available on, all on the wiki pages. You can uh, browse um, at your ledger. Deployments. So I know lots, um, lots been said about uh, well, some deployments not happening, but like a lot of activities been going on around the world that you may or may not be aware of. Um, recently this year, OP Corps Africa launched many programs in Africa, which kind of just concluded uh, this recently. A lot of programs that in countries like Senegal, Sierra Leone, Cameroon, South Africa, Uganda, Rwanda. Ghana, Nigeria, as you can see. There's been some recent deployments in OPC Asia, in China, in Malaysia, in Oceania, in PNG, South America, Peru, and Uruguay, and Paraguay. It's been a big deployment there. So as you can see, there's lots of activity happening out there, and lots of laptops ending up in the hands of children and given to them as full ownership. And they'll be able to use that at home and go to the classroom take it with them, play with the other friends, and basically have access to this technology. Sugar dev development. Um, just highlighting uh, a few things around the, uh, what's recently been happening this year. Karma is a, a Google Summer of Code project and a sub-project of Sugar Labs. And it was based off the evolution of uh, OLEs in Nepal's ePath lesson suite. It's basically, it was like a flash. Um, base lessons. And so what's been developed and is still in development is a, a framework based on uh, HTML5 and using primary like JavaScript, uh, jQuery, um, to be able to create uh, like framework to create lessons um, in that format and have it be portable over obviously based off HTML5 across a whole lot of systems. Um, there's a development, also I think Google Sum of Code for a, a new journal proposal as well. Um, I think that was it. And um, that was just improvements to the journal system. Um, maybe we could switch to this, the camera maybe? <coughs> just to give you a bit of overview. It's the journal system, it's a bit blurry there, but as you can see there's a few main compartments of the sugar environment. And uh, the journal is where it records all the students' work and um, they're able to go back and reopen their work and to access resources off a of USB, stuff like that. So it gives like a whole history log. So there's going to be de development of that journal further, I think, uh, for a whole lot of new features, tagging and things like that. And oh, I had up there, let me switch back to the slides, sorry. Google Wave and Sugar, there was a, a post. Uh, who's here um, been using Google Wave? Couple of people have access, yeah. Um, and well, obviously, it's in development still. And uh, there was just a, a, a post I spotted recently um, proposing, hey, let's, what could Google Wave do with, you know, integrated with Sugar? And um, that was by C. Scott Onion, as links in the references, 
I can share later. Uh, success stories. So there's been a couple, Oli Nepal, OLP Corps. What's next? What's the next success story? And um, well, that's the big question. And obviously, there's a lot of development going into upgraded hardware. But still, there's a lot of teams like around the world um, making these deployments happen, getting the laptops into kids' hands. Teams and communities working on the software, working on the hardware. So lots of lots is happening, and and I'm I'm pretty excited to to see where the or what's going to happen in the rest of this year and, and towards next year. I think I just missed. Um, who wants to go through? Just I might just show a video of. Um, I sorry I skipped it, but I just a bit of a video of um, some of the guys from OPC. This is um, John Wellington, and uh, just talking about the new laptop. Uh, OPC has a team over here trying to bring up the next generation of XO laptop. If we look at the the motherboard that was used in the first generation XO, one of the problems that we have is to obtain really cheap electronics. You need to be using the same chips that everyone else is. The memory chips that we used in the first generation and the flash chips that we used in the first generation are no longer available at at a price efficient point. In order to use more efficient chips, we had to switch the chipset and the processor that was used in the X01. So here you have an actual, the, the board of the X01.5. Yes. We, we got these back from assembly about a week and three days ago. And at this point, uh, most of the hardware had the industry. Yes. Or yes. Yes. That would be the most um, meaningful uh, capacity to, to use for the XO 1.5. It's the most cost effective. Yeah. Yes, it's it's a single chip of, of storage. So the, the big the big story that went around like uh, 1.5 XO 1.5 now is using VIA VIA chip uh, instead of MD geode. And so what is this new chip that VIA is bringing? It's so the the processor is well known. It's a C7M which is available on a number of motherboards already. The, the new chip is the VX855, which uh, is a combination of Northbridge and Southbridge on a single chip. Um, it provides us very low power. So those videos are available on YouTube if you want to have a look through a bit more later. I'll just read a... Uh, so 1.5 alpha test board in Taipei. Um, and I'm gonna give a quick demo. Uh, my name is Chris Ball, I work on software. And so, uh, while Mitch and Richard and John have been talking about bringing up the hardware, um, I've been working on the software, starting with Linux, the kernel, and moving up through Fedora and Sugar, which is the XO user interface that you see right here, and GNOME. Um, we're doing something a little bit different for the XO 1.5. Because we have so much more memory and so much more disk space, we can afford to put on a lot more software. And uh, what we've decided to do wow. is to use uh, the Fedora Linux distribution, Fedora 11, and to include both Sugar, the desktop, and GNOME, which is a standard sort of uh, normal desktop software. And that'll let uh, much older kids um, use the same kind of desktop we do. So here's Sugar running on the board. Um, we can see where the industry is going. X01.5 is perhaps even going to be cheaper, or? I, I certainly hope so. Yeah. Um, you, you tend to move smaller as, as manufacturing scale gets better and it, it doesn't result in a price increase, not at all. Okay. So I've been showing Sugar. Can you show one, some of the data apps, how fast they open? Sure, so this is Turtle Art, which is a logo drawing program. Which used uh, to be very slow to open, right? Yes. <laughs> so um, as just a bit of a demo there, um, the video is available to look at later. But uh, obviously the improvements in hardware as, as um, obviously technology gets better, um, will result in a lot of faster, more device, improved device. So let me oh, skip back. So I'd probably like to talk about um, support and growth um, for the old PC project. And there's a, a few few areas. Um, let's just start about talk about the support gang. So oh, it's a bit. Uh, but um, the old PC support gang and or old PC friends. Um, it's essentially a group of volunteers. So the support gang are a worldwide group of volunteers. And uh, 
helps to assist in the project overall and a whole overall level from you know, just support requests from people that are using the device or using sugar um, to being involved in grassroots groups, to being involved in testing, advocacy and a um, whole lot of things. So the means um, that that group works is uh, well, direct means, obviously being involved directly in the place of um, deployment um, or directly um, in a team doing development. And uh, on IRC forums, mailing lists, um, RT for dealing with support requests. And uh, just something I'd like to highlight with LPC Friends, uh, part of LPC Friends is uh, Wellington in New Zealand, the testing team. And uh, they've been doing some cool work, um, meeting quite regularly, I think on a weekly basis at times, um, doing a lot of testing of sugar, doing testing on VMs and things like that. And uh, so they're doing a lot of good work. So I'd just like to point that out. So it's like a, it's a community effort, would you think? Um, obviously, there's a whole lot of things with the economy and a whole lot of things with, I know some people, uh, not as many people employed at OLPC, but there's a growing support um, community. And, uh, and so that's continuing to grow. And one of the initiatives that's happening recently, it was something called a book sprint, and that will involve a lot of the volunteers and some of the people from OLPC. And uh, it's happening uh, in America, and uh, there's a link there. And uh, happening on the 6th to the 11th of September, essentially um, building a documentation um, for a mini deployment guide. So something that's going to help. Was there, was there a question? Sorry. Yep. Okay. I have plenty of time. Hopefully, time for questions. Yep. Yep. Which countries are paying for it? Yeah, a lot of. In terms of deployments and uh, like the, the funding for, for those activities, um, happens via a whole, maybe different, like I know um, probably, uh, let's say, um, foundations or like uh, sponsors or that. I know all, like all the uh, OLP Corps um, was like an organization set up that I think attracted like a lot of funding from like donations and things like that from various um, uh, charities or groups and then divided that up into a number of teams that um, applied and were successful and then they were given enough like the laptops paid for and a bit of supplies and help and they went ahead and with that project into the country so yeah no 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 um, typically the laptop the orders go through the headquarters right and uh, will get distributed um, essentially uh, working with for direct deployments to children in schools yep so not it's not targeted it's not available for say c people commercially yep um, yep yep yeah that was Yeah, that's happened. Like there was programs that have been have been run, but not now. Like give one get one program, um, and that was run in the states, and also I think to run here. But um, uh, essentially, those kind of programs have stopped because essentially it's for for children. Uh, laptops are available for developers, as like you can put in an application and be approved and receive laptops for that, and for say for like testing groups and development groups. Um, for groups that are going to contribute to the project, yeah. And um, so mainly, yeah, funding for these can happen by government funding in certain countries. Governments are um, paying for it, but in also other situations, it's well, like NGOs yeah, funding, funding the pilots or, or deployments. So moving forward with deployments, I mean, there's a few things I just wanted to touch on. You know, they should, on um, what should be focused on, I guess, and that should be supporting the school environment. That's what deployments are about. To, to set up the school with like, these laptops, with the technology, but also with you know, the, something that's going to support the learning and the curriculum that's uh, established in that classroom, in the school. Um, with deployments, obviously team development and coordination is very important. You know, um, obviously, can, uh, just from 
looking at the old P Corps and all the teams, they seem to, from just reading all the posts from there, it seems like their team development and coordination was very was done very well. And you can see that um, it was successful. Um, and through that, obviously, like I mentioned before, the documentation guides and training, just to help uh, new developments, um, new deployments um, go ahead quite easier, have the resources there to, to go ahead and do new deployments. Um, a lot of it's kind of like maybe all new and it's quite new ground in some countries maybe. And uh, obviously every country needs to be treated differently. So there's a whole lot of things you, um, to learn from um, different deployments. Not, I wouldn't say, I would say that no one's particularly is the same, but there's a lot of things in common that um, it's good to, for teams to be aware of. Aware of. So um, project sustainment, it's like once the deployments occurred and the laptops are uh, being delivered in the child's hands, programs have been established, support networks there, it needs, or it's that support network it needs to be sustained, it needs to be continued. It's, I don't think there's any good in just putting a laptop. It's probably good, like it's exciting at first, but it needs some kind of a project ongoing to have that sustained. And um, that will only occur generally by the support network and by the teams establishing those deployments. And lastly, on open content. Um, I'm sorry, it might be getting a bit educational, but I just thought I'd give you a general overview. Um, this just touching on you know, something that's going to support the school's curriculum, um, developing content, but also sharing it so that others can benefit from it. And um, whether these, I know like a lot of people here are developers, um, developing new tools, programs, but you know, what comes from those, the use of those programs is content and how that is managed and distributed and, and uh, well shared is, is important for others to take advantage of that and to, for that openness, um, I guess it's important to, to have that culture and I think the, the community surrounding LPC has that openness um, ingrained in its culture. So it also should be focused on supporting the, the child, but also the teacher at an individual level, not just at the school level. And that's like, in terms of development, like designing or the environment or designing activities that are going to meet the needs of, of that user. I think that's what we do as developers. We look at the needs first and then go about designing and developing. So um, also be language and culturally specific. I mean, um, Many different cultures around the world obviously vary and do uh, everything's different, yeah. So and language is different. So the implementations of of this of the content that's going to work with the laptop project needs to be culturally specific. Needs to fit in. It's not, I don't think there's any good in having a whole lot of content that's kind of or maybe Australian-based content to work in maybe Africa. I don't think maybe it would work. Maybe it wouldn't. But the, it would be better if content is developed for the system, so to speak, um, culturally specific for that, for that environment. And that only comes about from being involved directly, I think, and being immersed in that, and working with the teachers and working with um, students in the school environment, those locations. Uh, questions, I think I'm at the end. Uh, if you would like me to demo any, anything else on the laptops here, yeah, yep. I'm not sure about that specifically. I think I uh, just took uh, for those slides off the documentation. Yep. Yep. Is a C7. Yep. Yeah. It might be there because it can be clocked. It uh, can be obviously brought back to certain speeds. It may be a power issue to conserve power for power management purposes. Um, so yeah, I'm unsure about that. It probably could be brought up if it is the same process. It probably could be brought to that speed, but there might be rep like obviously complications with the system. I think that's in the hands of the developers in their testing. Yeah. Yep. Sorry. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. 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 It should still be working on the mesh basis. I know um, 
like there's a laptop over there. <laughs> I think, uh, as you can see, it works. On, this is the, net, the network um, screen. If I just, uh, as you can see, there's like uh, mesh nodes here. And so it is, when it's running, it is searching it all the time for other laptops and working on that mesh. So it does, I think it looks on the mesh first and then it falls back on the access points. And right. So yeah, it's still in the laptop, we'll still be in the new laptop. Um, and just on the sugar side, I think I mentioned um, in sugar on a stick there, looking into improvements, so it works with ad hoc networking as well. Yeah. Was there any questions yet, Dave? Yeah. Yeah. I guess I thought the biodegradable parts would be the plastics yeah. that used. I, I assume I'm pretty sure the manufacturing is all should be the same in terms of the body. What's different is like the motherboard, the hardware internally. Um, in terms of yeah, I think that's all generic in terms of um, environmentally friendly. Um, I think uh, there's still, obviously the big focus, like I mentioned, is power consumption. Obviously you want a laptop like this to work off the battery for as long as possible, so um, that's what they focus on when they're testing the hardware. And if you look through a lot of, um, I think a few of the videos, um, over the last few months they've been testing and, and improving bits and pieces on the hardware. Um, it's like a continual development to, imp to make those improvements and um, the final result will be what comes out. Uh, was there any other questions? Yes? Yes? The, the, the video on YouTube? Sorry? The, oh, this, oh, this for, um, I'm pretty sure it would be org for us, yeah? I'm not exactly sure. I'm pretty sure it would be org, org thing. Yeah. So um, I'd say it'd be doing the open format, standard format. Not, um, I'm pretty sure. Not 100% certain about that, sorry. But I'm pretty sure. Yes? Could you elaborate on mesh? I, I don't know. Yeah, a mesh. Yeah. Yep. What mesh is exactly as the network? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not particularly too knowledgeable around the whole network area. But yeah, just like I was talking a bit before, um, mesh essentially is like it creates its own network in a way. So. This is a laptop, there's another laptop over there. If that was connected, say, to the world, through access point, this could work on the mesh basis connecting to that laptop. They could share data between each other, right? So it sets up a local network uh, within the range of the Wi-Fi, of the, of the antenna, yeah. And the Wi-Fi has what sort of range? Quite good range. Yeah, I've, uh, I guess uh, in meters, but no, big, like, I, I can pick up, I remember I was at Macquarie Uni, I could pick up the library, which was like, across the other side of campus nearly, in a way, I mean, it's got a, yeah, oh, uh, you, you're at Macquarie, it's dodgy, it's there, I think some tests, yeah, yeah, it's, do you know have any figures exactly, <laughs> it's like, maybe, I remember meeting some people from the, like, they had a farm once and they were testing out there how, what was the longest that they could get. And I think, I can't remember the exact figure, it was a while ago. It's it's a standalone, yeah. it's a standalone, I mean the mesh is yeah. a standalone system, so mm -hmm. you don't have yeah. to have a provider, service provider or anything like that. Yeah, you. correct. You could have a group of laptops all working together, yeah. essentially that's the idea. Yeah, yeah, In, independent of that. So there's also with, with deployments at times there's a school server that acts as like a central access point and that can also work given the right antenna connected on a mesh basis too. So that's all built into that. And uh, that can do like automatic backups to the server and other things like that, other nifty things. So that's good for use in schools yeah. and, um, and obviously with the teacher and things like that, managing it. Uh, yeah, so let's go to back, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely this one. 
still in a new one. Um, still saying it looks like the Marvel maybe it looks Marvel still, so I'm unsure about the details about that. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I know there was a like they mentioned. I think a whole lot of the existing hardware isn't being made anymore, so they're going to an obviously new manufacturer, but they're still sticking with Marvel um, for the wireless. I think maybe there's um, probably their best option, I think, it must be, but for a good range, I think, for, for a good piece of hardware. It's not? The routing? Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, that's something to check up on, but they're still using that, or they've done some development around that to open source in a way. Open, open it up. Yep. Yeah. Um, reference. Oh, yes, I see. Just have one, one more question. One more? Uh, who should be? Oh, two more. Time to get everyone excited. Yeah. Show us a couple of the images for the episode 2.0. Oh, the 2.0. Well, that's, I've seen. In the wiki, you can see an image, and that's like, or oh, a touch pad, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the reason why I asked is, yeah. 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 Correct, yeah. I'd, I'd essentially say that 2.0, 2 no, not this year, definitely not. That's something that's looking at later down the line. There's, there's no hardware ready for that, for that device yet. The idea is there, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Probably a silly question. Yeah. How do you prevent some silly, some little African kids from writing the virus? Send it down. Yeah. Well, it's not running Windows, so that's good. <laughs> uh, yeah, at a well, at the school level, um, there's some measures that you can do to control, obviously, um, with the school server, and it's and it access like you can make it just work with the, the school server alone and not work at home. So there's those kind of control areas of control, um, whether that's the choice of the local implementation. So also with like filtering systems as well, using that through the school server, because have that as the access point, and filtering what they can view and what they can actually do. That's, there's some options around that, I guess. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, true. <laughs> I guess um, obviously it's for a child and right, ages are currently from 5 to 12. Maybe the new laptop might be targeted at older ages because it can switch to a different Windows manager like GNOME and, and they can have full, all those full app Linux apps on there now as well. So yeah, that will open it up for doing a whole lot of hacking things, I guess. Oh, the security yeah, bit for us? Rainbow? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, bit for us. I think in later, like in terms of sugar usage, um, Rainbow support's coming back, and I think uh, Rainbow's to bit for us. You talking about? Yeah. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. 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 Um, I'm not too sure about details, really. Off my head. <laughs> yeah. There is a, yeah, the security um, spec is written. And uh, there's a lot of discussions happening, obviously, a lot of disputes around that area 
I think, in terms of how that works. Um, yeah, sorry. Go up. Yeah, yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. I think I said um, maybe up to eight hours or so, for like four to eight hours. Varies on how much I see on uh, the screen usage and stuff like that. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thanks very much. <laughs>